Zwom Bimo. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Bimo Creative Fact About Fiction video. So this one is about Native American Indian armor. And the reason why I'm making this video is because I'm so exhausted from Hollywood showing Native Americans, Indians, not wearing anything. Uh, in the movies, Indians that they refer to as braves in the movies go into battle wearing nothing but some leather pants or just a loincloth. But in reality, many Native American cultures wore body armor into battle. I mean, they've even done this with the new Avatar movie, just like they did with the old Avatar movie, where they run around practically naked, and it literally makes no sense. It really doesn't, especially when they're going into battle. So, yeah, let's move on. What kind of materials were used? Uh, leather, rawhide, wood, bone, antler, padded cotton, wool, copper, bronze, gold, silver, and iron, just to name a few, were all materials used in making armor for generations of Native American tribes. So, what sort of Indians used armor for battle? Practically all of them. Uh, the Blackfoot tribe, as well, all the Blackfoot tribes, by the way, as well as uh, Apache, Omaha, Pawnee, Wyute, the Wailaki, Navajo, Kiowa, Comanche, Wichita, Shoshone, Inuit, Aleut, Tinglet, Nootka, and many others wore armor into battle in layers. A warrior could be wearing an alder cuirass, for example, and a helmet over a thick leather tunic, also potentially covered by some kind of copper breastplate. Just to give an example, to make them tougher in battle, that's what it was for. Uh, photography was invented later, but some preserved examples and illustrations still exist. I have researched a great deal of sources that all point to Native Americans making use of heavier and sometimes more complex sets of armor for both themselves and their horses. So I drew this because the armor that they created very much reminds me of Japanese samurai armor. So I just combine that into Native American armors that I found because I don't look at stuff when I draw it and I just drew like an, an Indian on horseback wearing the kind of armor that they would have worn. And even tribal elders interviewed in the 19th and 20th centuries confirmed this and explained that they used much heavier armor in the quote-unquote old days, as they put it. Many of the surviving hide helmets come from the Apache, who kept using them well into the 19th century. Uh, horse armor is uh, shown in this rock art of northwestern Great Plains like the Geofana Rock Shelter in Montana and just at first glance it looks like two samurai one on horseback and one standing there with a shield uh, but these are this is a Native American art this is Native Americans wearing armor it's pretty awesome Leather and rawhide were used to protect the head and chest primarily, but uh, wood, cane, and thick cloth turbans were also used as helmets. Hardened, boiled leather for shields and armor plates. A glue bath mixed with sand or e for even harder leather pieces, whether or not it was tanned or not. Then, this material was sewn together in multiple layers. Up to eight layers have been found as highly musket-proof and worn primarily by horseback fighters. They also added scale armor out of materials of wood and bone and other materials. Navajo um, four-ply warrior shirts had sleeves and kind of resembled an English buff coat. So you can see that there on the left and right. And you can see the scales, different kinds of scale mail armor that they made there. Pretty amazing stuff. So Lewis and Clark wrote about the Shoshone that they have a kind of armor, something like a coat of mail, which is formed by a great many folds of dressed antelope skins, united by means of a mixture of glue and sand. With this, they cover their own bodies and those of their horses and find it impervious to the musket and arrow. So there you go. 
right out of the mouths of Lewis and Clark. So yes, firearms did eventually get way deadlier when you went from round spherical firearm shooters like muskets to actual bullets. They became way deadlier and they made their way into Native American societies, drastically changing warfare and ta tactics and resulting in the reduction of, in my opinion, superb armor and bow making traditions, which is kind of sad. Other than practical reasons caused by firearms, because if you were shot with a bullet and it did go through all those layers of armor and it went into your body, it would bring that sand, that glue, that wood, that bone, the leather chunks, it would bring all of that into your body as well. So even if you got the bullet out, you could probably die of infection more likely. So that's a good reason to not wear that kind of armor into battle anymore. Some groups had cultural reasons to wear little armor, however, like the Ponca, who believed uh, in a society of not afraid to die. So they emphasized the importance of dying in battle and encouraged fearless behavior. Sticking their spears in the ground and not withdrawing from a fight unless someone else picked that spear up for them. So there you go. Uh, in California, the Hoopa and the Atsugwe only gave armor to experienced fighters. And younger, inexperienced, unarmed warriors were placed in between them in battle formations. Not unlike other parts of the world, like, you know, wearing medieval armor. Only knights wore it, so it was a symbol of status. It's the same way with the Atsugwe and the Hoopa. So, there you are. If you would like more information about this kind of stuff, you could read one of the books that I read. I think is one of the best ones by David E. Jones. It's the North Native North American Armor and Shields Fortifications. Very cool book. And here's some more armor that I found at various museums. And I gotta say, I can't help but notice that with the neck plating to cover your face, and then they make a helmet that looks like a face on top of their head, it makes it at first glance look like these people are much taller than they actually are, upwards of seven feet tall. And at first glance, I have no doubt that this probably made other um, tribes look at this tribe and think they've got giants working with them. They've got Sasquatch working with them at first glance Do you notice the face isn't moving. But yeah, I mean, they could have very well did this to display that they have giants working with them. And imagine if they actually did have giants working with them. I mean, yeah, I would, I'd bet that that tribe was pretty powerful if they had Sasquatch or some of the forest giants working on their side. So anyway, that's going to do it for this one, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to Be More Creative for more Fact About Fiction videos. Thanks.